go for it. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Should we take our seats so we can get our service going this morning? <laughs> Good to see you all. It's lovely to see you all interacting. <laughs> you know, we were, we were talking earlier, <coughs> and um, <laughs> it was said that we are now a lineup of uh, ninnies and grumps. When we, <laughs> and grumps, grandpa, ninnies, sorry? Bob's. And Bob's. Oh, and Bob's. Oh, yes, you're a Bob. What are you? What are you? Nanny. Nanny. You're a <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm a nin. I'm a nin. They're called nin or ninny, well, which suits me, really. I write ninny. And um, <laughs> as I say, and Nigel is a grumps. I wonder why. <laughs> but when we started, when, you know, we think back, was it 25, 27 years now or so, you say we were a lineup of vigorous people. But we're going to be invigorated by the worship this morning, okay? <laughs> it's good to see you all. Right, before we get going, we'll have um, uh, notices, please, from Katie. Are you up for your notice, sweetheart? <laughs> Um, just remind everybody that my coffee morning in aid of the Miscarriage Association is on Wednesday and it's at 12.30. Um, and I'd really, really appreciate anybody that could come along and, you know, just show support in any way that you can because it's, um, it's a really important cause, you know, the research that they do. Hopefully one day we will live in a world where we can prevent any baby loss or anything like that. And that's what their main aim is. So everybody's welcome. Please do come along. Thanks, Katie. And um, a notice from Andy that uh, sh over on the table, on the side there, you'll see there um, some bits and pieces to go um, uh, for love in the box. You know, the boxes that we send every year. Is it Romania? Is it Roma Where did they go to? Romania? Romania. Out to Romania. So if you'd like, yeah, so if you'd like, if you'd like to sort of add to your boxes, then please have a look through things on the side. Okay, let's pray. Oh, Father God, we just thank you and praise you once again that we can come and meet together. It's good to see so many here this morning, but we're also very aware of those who will be watching at home online. So, Father, again, just we thank you that we can do this and that we can enter into your presence. Oh, we, we praise you and we bless you and we thank you because you are our awesome God. Just come now. By the power of your Holy Spirit, we just speak into each and every um, heart, I pray. And I pray that this time that we spend together will be a real joy, will be a real joy, uh, Lord, um, to you, to us. And that will send us out there to be a joy uh, to the people that we come across in our homes. So, Father, bless this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's stand and sing. Come, let us worship the King of Kings. Come, let us worship the King of Kings, the Creator of all things. Let your soul Approach your heavenly throne. Come and fill this place with your glory. Come and catch the praise our gaze. Come and fill us with your fire. That the world might know your name. For you are God and you're worthy to be praised. You are good. For your love will never end, the great I am. You are faithful in all of your ways. You are God, and you're worthy to be praised. You are good, for your love will never end, the great I am. You are faithful in all of your ways. 
that song again. Come, let us worship the King of Kings. Come, let us worship the King of Kings, the Creator of all things. Let your soul arise to Him. Come and bless the Lord our King. Lord, my heart and And with confidence I come to approach your heavenly throne. Come and fill this place with your glory. Come and captivate our gaze. Come and fill us with your fire that the world might know your name. You are God, and you're worthy to be praised. You are good, for your love will never end. The great I am, you are faithful in all of your ways. You are God, and you're worthy to be praised. You are good, and your love will never end. The great I am. You are faithful in all of your ways. Faithful God, wonderful God. Come with confidence before him. Come in confidence. Beloved and blessed. The Father's pure delight, Redeemer, Sustainer, you're my passion and my prize. My brother, my comforter, my shepherd and my friend, my ransom. My righteousness and the stream that never ends. You're unchanging, you're magnificent. You are all I could desire. You're my bread of life, son of righteousness. You're the love that satisfies. There's kindness, compassion for those who will draw near. Acceptance, forgiveness, and a love that conquers fear. You're unchanging, you're magnificent, you are all I could desire. You're my breath of life, son of righteousness. You're the love that satisfies. You're the word of life. You're the breath of heaven. You're the lion and the lamb. For within me Christ, Lord, be glorified by everything I am. Beloved, my beloved, beloved, my beloved. just praised you. I can't help but praise you. I, my heart is just singing this morning. It is such a joy to meet together and to worship and to worship. I'm going to pray for our little ones. Is there any little ones here to, to go out?
they're all with Yanko, Father God, we just bring our little ones to you and uh, we thank you for them. We thank you that they uh, they want to come, that they're here, Lord. And we, we thank you that uh, for all the Sunday Club leaders um, and the helpers that uh, have a passion for nurturing our children. So we pray that you really will be with them and grow them, Lord. Grow them and we can ask no better thing than our children come to know you in their younger years. Oh, Lord, grant that it will be so. Sow sow the seeds today in their little hearts and minds, I pray. Bless them. Encourage them. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh, would you like to sit down, please? (laughs) I'm going to lead us in intercessory prayer this morning. Uh, These have been written by Gladys. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we gather together this morning, we thank you that we're able to do so. We pray, of course, about the continuation of COVID-19 and long that it would be over. But help each one of us to be patient and to trust. Dear Lord, we thank you for our NHS and think of all the countries without it. We pray for them and ask that at least they will all be enabled to have the vaccinations. We pray for all the work of the people in the Christian organizations. Think in particular of Open Doors, Mission Without Borders, Barnabas, and Mission Aviation. They do a tremendous work of fellowship. We pray for Afghanistan and all the people who fled the country. We pray for peace for them and a safe haven. We pray for the people of Syria. We read there are many Muslims meeting Jesus through the courageous witness of the church in Syria. We pray for Open Doors partners supporting and nurturing them. Father, we pray for our Prime Minister and his government. We pray for wise decisions to be made and harmony between them. We pray now, Lord, for our police force that they would be helped to cope with the stigma of events that have happened recently. We pray for all people who work for the good of our community. Dear Lord, we pray for our church fellowship and for our leadership team. Thank you for them and for their commitment and faithfulness. We pray for our Sunday school team also and ask that you bless them for their care. We pray for any children who come, whether regulars or holiday makers. We think now of any in our fellowship who are unwell, and we pray for Mike and Jean. We thank you that Jean has recovered from a stroke and pray that she will get stronger. And we pray for Mike too. We pray now for Christie's news to remain positive and pray you will be with her and help her as she copes with her chemo. And we pray too for Nick as it's not easy to see one's loved one suffering. And remember Tom and Pat Thompson and pray for them. Bless them, Lord, and also Joyce, who felt your blessing during her birthday weekend, we know. And we pray now for your blessing on Richard and Pam as well. So in conclusion, we gather these thoughts together. I say to them all, in the name of Jesus, Amen. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare with your living hope, your presence, Lord. Let's stand and sing together as we welcome. We welcome in the Holy Spirit. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. 
your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Holy Spirit Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts Spirit in. Just welcome him. Take that time just to feel that spirit welling up inside of you, that you might really know the joy of God's presence. Your presence, Lord. As the song says, come and just overwhelm us. Overwhelm us today. By your presence deep within us, I pray. Bless you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You may, if you'd like to sit down. I've got an exciting thing that's going to happen now because we're going to be welcoming Elaine into membership. Hi, Lane. Come and stand next to that microphone. It won't bite you. You can go quite close to it, a little bit closer. Ah. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, as we uh, do traditionally, when somebody becomes a member of the church, we welcome them, them in and come to the front, and uh, we do a few questions. And Mark's going to lead us with a, a PowerPoint uh, on there. There's a couple of bits for you as members of the church, and I'll ask you to stand 
we will say we will when we get to that point. So let me remind you of what the aim of our church is. It is to reach out with the love of God to unchurched people, primarily on Hailing Island, but to the ends of the earth, to help them become disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, to nurture those of mature and new faith so that they develop in their knowledge, understanding and application of the Bible and grow in their personal relationship with God and those around them. Member membership of our church is open to all who believe in the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ, profess faith in him and repentance towards God, profess faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour and whose lives bear evidence of their Christian commitment. So, I've already met with Elaine, and I know a lot of you, I got to know Elaine. If you haven't got, had a chance to chat with Elaine, go on, get on and do it. <laughs> so, Elaine, do you believe that what the Bible says about Jesus is true? I do. Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? I have. As a member of this church, do you promise to share your gifts and talents with these people in this place and to further the witness of Jesus Christ as a member of this church? I do. So I invite you as members of this church to stand, please, if you can. And I say to you, will you as members of Hailing Island Baptist Church promise to share your lives and journey of faith with Elaine, walking together in ways that are known and yet to be made known? We will. Will you pray for Elaine and do all you can to help them to witness to Jesus Christ? We will. Please take a seat again. I'm now going to pray for Elaine. Loving God, we thank you for calling Elaine to be a disciple in the fellowship of this church. We thank you that for the family that you have created and especially today for Elaine. And by the power of your spirit, make them more like Jesus, that together they may serve you and witness to your redeeming love in the world to which Christ died. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's get a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. You can take a seat. Thank you. If you aren't a member and you'd like to become a member of the church, then come and have a chat with me at, uh, at some time and I'll walk you through what's involved. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Mm. And welcome. It's wonderful to welcome you into our family of our church. Mm, bless you. My Lord. Actually, we'd ask Elaine what um, song she chose she would like this morning, and she chose The Goodness of God. But we're not actually going to sing that now, because I'd actually chosen it <laughs> um, early in the week for after the sermon. So we will sing that, Elaine, um, later on. Mm. Right. I'm just going to read something now before we sing our next song. Um. I don't know how many of you know Lee Stanley Jones. I have quoted him before, um, is that, but he, he was a missionary uh, to India in the turn of the last century. But oh, again, if you can ever get hold of anything that he's written, I mean, it, 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 he's, he's incredible and incredible. It, a lot of it is written, as you say, in quite old English, and sometimes I have to read it over and over again because um, some of the words we don't use these days, but <laughs> it's, um, he is, he's, he's brilliant. But this is um, from one of his books. In Jesus, we see revealed a God who does everything which he commands us to do. He obeys his own laws of right and wrong. For those laws are the transcript of his own character. He commands them for he does them. Does them because they are inherently right. That bases morality not on the whim of God, but on the very character of God. It makes the universe of morality one and indivisible for God and man. And it makes it possible to love and obey God who illustrates in his own character and life everything he expects us to do. He is not a cosmic finger post pointing the direction to confused humanity. He is a shepherd who goes before his sheep and leads them. He initiates nothing that he doesn't illustrate. That kind of a God can have my wholehearted allegiance. 
and my wholehearted love. Stand and sing together, the Lord is my shepherd. My shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. I will trust, and I will trust in you. guides my ways. He guides my ways in righteousness. And he anoints my head with oil. And my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on his pure delight. And I will trust in you alone, and I will trust in you alone, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will lead me Though I walk the darkest part, I will not be the evil one. For you are with me, and your rod and staff are the comfort I need to know. And I will trust in you. Goodness will lead me home. I will trust, I will trust in you, Lord. We trust in you because you are our shepherd. You are a good God. Lord, now as we come to hear from Alan, uh, again, Father, we just thank you for him. I just pray that you will uh, really bless that word that you have given him for us. Lord, I pray that we'll have our ears on and our hearts open and our eyes at, uh, that we might see in our ears attuned to what you're saying to us, Father God, in the here and now. So come, speak through him, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Just talk amongst yourself while we um, rearrange the furniture here. Have you got your ears on this morning? <laughs> good, good. A shepherd was minding his flock in a remote pasture when suddenly a brand new BMW X5 screeched to a halt. 
The driver, a young man in an Armani suit and wearing the Ray-Bans, leant out of the window and asked the shepherd, if I tell you exactly how many sheep you have in your flock, will you give me one of them? The shepherd looked at the man and looked at his peacefully grazing flock and said, sure. Well, the man whipped out his smartphone and opened his Earth satellite app, and within moments he had the results. You have exactly 1,586 sheep. That's correct, said the shepherd. Take one of the sheep. And he watched the young man select one of the animals and bundle it into the back of his car. And then the shepherd said, if I can tell you exactly what your business is, will you give me back my animal? Sure, why not, said the young man. Well, clearly you are a consultant, said the shepherd. That's right, said the man, but how did you guess? No guessing required, said the shepherd. You turned up here, though nobody called you. You want to get paid for an answer that I already knew to a question that I never asked, and you know nothing about my business. Now, can I have my dog back? <laughs> did that get a laugh out of Tom? Did yeah, yeah, there was a, got a, a smirk out of Tom. <laughs> Oddly enough, this morning we're not going to talk about consultants but we're going to talk about shepherds, or shall I say, in particular, one totally unique shepherd. Now, much of Jesus' teaching was delivered in the form of a parable. And a parable is a story with human characters, as opposed to a fable, which generally has animals as the central characters. And it illustrates an important lesson or principle We can perhaps think of the sower, the faithful servant, or perhaps even better known, the good Samaritan or the prodigal son. Now, interestingly, there are very few parables in John's Gospel. Now, I didn't realize this until I researched this this week. Some scholars say there are just two, and others argue there are none at all. Jesus also used the allegory, which means that the the characters and the events symbolize or represent a particular meaning or truth. Now, if you come to uh, study this passage in your D groups, uh, a little note of caution with dealing with an allegory. So rule number one is not to explain every smallest detail. Don't overanalyze it, as you may end up misinterpreting the passage. Try to grasp the main idea. And rule number two is not to be too literal. So understand what is meant to be symbolic and what is meant to be seen in its normal meaning. And rule number three, mixed metaphors need to be a problem. If we look at Revelation, John expects to see a lion, but then he sees a lamb. He expects to see a bride, but he sees a city. They cannot literally be the same thing at the same time, but they can be described in two different ways. So, back to shepherds and sheep. Most of us are town dwellers, and we're pretty remote from farming and tending livestock. And maybe if we do think about it, we we probably have a rose-tinted romantic image of a shepherd who, someone who spends their time leaning on a gate, carefully watching over their flock, quietly grazing in lush green meadows. And he enjoys watching the lambs frolic and play. I suspect the reality is rather different. It must be very hard physical work. It's making tough decisions like life and death decisions. It must mean working in rain and sleet and snow and extremes of temperatures. It's knowing the sheep intimately and constantly looking for something that's not right, looking for hazards, looking for dangers. But I guess like most difficult jobs, I'm sure it has its rewards. 
So on to our reading. We're continuing our series on uh, John's Gospel. And we're now up to uh, John chapter 10. Oh, I lost my marker. Oh, here we are. John chapter 10, starting at the, the first verse. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, for they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as a father knows me, and I know the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. What a marvellous passage. And the idea of uh, God as the shepherd of his people, and his people described it, uh, as sheep, has its roots in the Old Testament. The whole of Ezekiel chapter 34 is based on this idea of sheep and shepherds. And the corrupt leaders of Israel are described as shepherds who failed to care for the flock, who only look after themselves. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the Sovereign Lord. In Isaiah 53, we read that all we, all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Well, here the prophet Isaiah is foretelling the sacrifice of Jesus some 700 years before the event. And there are numerous other references, and it's interesting that I chose Psalm 23, which we sang earlier. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green, in green pastures. Sheep are virtually defenseless against predators. Even if they're not physically attacked, they can even die from stress, literally die of fright. I read that in uh, North America, around 150,000 sheep and lambs are killed every year. And the majority are by coyotes. Now, a coyote is not quite the same as a wolf, although it looks similar, it's smaller and lighter. But you get the point in the story for a shepherd looking after a flock of sheep. 
the wolf is a very serious and a very deadly threat. Maybe in our story, we can equate the wolf in the passage with Satan. But the main focus here is on the contrast between the good shepherd and the hired hand. And I suspect that the Pharisees are the likely target because they have no real love and concern for the true sheep. They've, they've just dismissed the miracle of the blind man given sight, which we heard last week. They're self-serving and simply concerned for their own position of dominance in the society. So in the face of a challenge, the, the hireling, the Pharisee, the false religious leader runs away and abandons the sheep. But Jesus describes himself as the good shepherd and is very different. It's possible that a conscientious, caring shepherd might risk his life to try and defend the sheep against the wolf. But he would surely be very mindful of his own safety. He would defend the sheep, but also try and save his own life. Because should he die in the attempt, the flock would be the mercy of the wolf. So at this point, Jesus departs from the expected scenario. I am the good shepherd, he says, for unlike any normal or even a very good shepherd, he willingly and quite deliberately lays down his life for the sheep. Now his hearers at the time wouldn't have appreciated the meaning. But Jesus is clearly foretelling the events of Calvary and the cross. The salvation of the sheep, the salvation of those who put their faith in him is bought at the price of his sacrifice. One important point is that it's not simply for all sheep everywhere, but he said his own sheep. And scripture is very clear on this point that salvation is not a, a universal gift bestowed on everyone but it is universally available for all those who would accept Jesus and Jesus made another point he said I have other sheep that means Gentiles that means you and I that are not of this fold that's of Israel and the Jewish people I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Jesus regards the, the Jewish fold and the non-Jewish or the Gentile fold as one flock. A new period was dawning. The church was about to go global. And in those few words, it represents a major change of theology. Previously, just hinted at in a few Old Testament passages. But now Jesus spells it out in a very clear and unmistakable way. Through the work of the Holy Spirit and beginning with the apostles such as John and Paul and those who followed and amazing as it seems that includes you and me there would be one flock and one shepherd. The other way which Jesus differs from the ordinary shepherd, Judas may have betrayed him, the Jewish leaders may have plotted to kill him and arranged a complete travesty of a trial. Pilate washed his hands, the Roman soldiers beat and whipped him and nailed him to the cross. But this was no unfortunate accident, this wasn't some dreadful miscalculation because Jesus very deliberately and purposefully laid down his life to save the sheep. The victory was his, not theirs. Do we get an amen? amen? Amen. But unlike any person before and after having laid down his life, he was able to take it up again. And so he was foretelling not only his death on the cross, but his amazing resurrection. 
So what can we learn from this passage? Well, I think this is a beautiful illustration that Jesus teaches us that he loves and cares for us like no other. He reassures us by his constant presence. He knows each one of us by name. He gently leads us when we hear his voice and follow. And we find sustenance for our bodies and our spirit. So what of us, the sheep? We need to listen to his voice and not heed the voice of strangers. Well, this poses a big question. Can you actually hear his voice? I don't necessarily mean in a, a literal sense by hearing an audible sound, but can you hear his voice? You might think it would have been great to have been around Jesus 2,000 years ago, to literally hear his voice. There would be no problem believing in him, surely. Well, the simple answer is no. Most of the people who heard Jesus either didn't understand what he was saying or simply refused to believe him and some even plotted to have him executed. Even his own disciples seemed to have great difficulty in grasping what he was saying. And it wasn't until, it wasn't until the resurrection, not until his ascension, not until Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit that they understood and it all began to make sense. We, of course, have the benefit of Scripture, the Spirit-inspired Word of God. We have the benefit of 2,000 years of hindsight. We have the benefit of the Holy Spirit who opens our ears to hear the voice of Jesus. Now, it occurred to me that God speaks to us in a number of ways. Sometimes maybe in dreams and visions or simply a thought coming to mind or a picture. And you hear people say, I feel that God is saying whatever it is. Now, some people seem to be very, very certain that they've heard God speaking to them. Personally, when I have those thoughts, I immediately question, is this coming from the God or from the random thoughts in Alan Griffiths' head? Maybe that's just my personality. But it is right that we, we test and try to discern these things and sometimes take wise counsel from others. We need to be humble enough to accept that we are fallible people, given to changing moods and emotions. But I'm not dismissing these things in any shape or form. Maybe the surest way of hearing his voice is to read and understand his word. Whether it's a, a timeless principle or teaching or how it relates to our current circumstances. So here's a question for us. Do you hear his voice? Do you recognize his voice? And perhaps most importantly, do you respond to his voice? We need to follow Jesus and Jesus alone and not chase after false teachers and false leaders who peddle things that would lead us astray because there are many people such as this and perhaps the most dangerous are those who set themselves up to be great Christian leaders who proclaim Christ in word but then deny him in their lives. Jesus himself said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly are ravenous wolves. So once again, do you hear his voice? Do you recognize his voice? Do you respond to his voice? And will you go where he leads you? We need to understand and rejoice in the promise of life everlasting, which doesn't mean simply 
existing forever, but living in the presence of Father, Son, and Spirit. We are totally dependent on Jesus, the Good Shepherd, for all things, for provision, for direction, for protection, for life itself. Blessed are those who put their trust in a shepherd such as this. Indeed, blessed are we. Let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we pray that by your Holy Spirit we would hear your voice. We would recognize your voice. We would respond to your voice. And then we will go where you lead us. Sometimes that may be into places of great joy and happiness. Sometimes it may be through quite dark and difficult times. But Jesus, we know that you are with us. You know each and every one of us by name. And we love you and we praise you. Amen. get a warm feeling that sort of runs through you when you hear a sermon like that. Thank you, Alan. His sheep follow him because they love his voice. I know that I can testify so many times down the years how that I can look, look back and say, yeah, you have spoken then. I love this next song. It talks about the goodness of God. Indeed, we say, yes, our good shepherd. And the chorus is, all my days, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Even when I'm not singing, Singing on the inside, singing on the inside of the goodness of God. You can stand or you can sit however <coughs> you want to sing this and worship as well. No. Oh. 
my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness Your goodness is running after, it's running after me your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down and surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness of God the goodness God. Life with the shepherd is living on a, on a higher plane because of his overflowing forgiveness, love, and guidance. What we'll gift of grace? What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to be. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. For my life is wholly bound to this. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, his power is displayed. To this I hold. My shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley he will lead All oh, the night has been won And I shall overcome Yet not I, but through Christ in me No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold. now and ever is my plea. All the chains are released, I can 
sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne. This I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me, yet not I, but through Christ in me. We can never doubt that, that when... We call on his name, Christ in me, in you. So whatever we face, whatever life throws at us, we can know his strength, his goodness. Oh, we bless and praise your almighty and powerful and wonderful, wonderful name. Lord, and it's a joy to know that no matter where we go, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, you are there. You are by our side. You're in us, you're around us, you're running after us. Mm. Thank you, Father, that we can be called sheep of your sheep pen. And Lord, as we leave this place this morning and we go our separate ways, pray your blessing upon each and every one, each and every one of us, Lord, here. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name.